two packages and a system review as I'm back for another season jam-packed full of handhelds, tabletops, consoles and accessories as this is season 4 part 1 of video games and consoles from the loft. Well welcome back and yes it's Sunday once again and it's great to be back for another season jam packed full of goodies and to lead off this new season I have two packages to share with you and a system review which I've wanted to do for some time. So let's kick start off this new season with these two awesome packages. Well this first package I have here I received about two weeks ago and I've been holding it off so I can unbox it with this unboxing to the right of me. And uh, this was sent through uh, from a guy called John or otherwise known as Xbox 360 Collections. And John's a really great guy and you should definitely check out his channel. He's got a lot of unboxings, uh, recent pickups, uh, collection videos and it's always very interesting to hear his thoughts and opinions on video games from the past and the present and I love watching his videos. And I'd just like to say John thank you ever so much for this really generous gift. I'm totally blown away man and uh, I think it's about time we had a look to see what's inside. Well John actually told me what game he was sending me but uh, I won't tell you until I've actually opened the package so uh, let's crack it open and have a look. This is totally awesome. I've had to have quite a bit of uh, willpower to not open this. Oh, there's even a note. Hang on. And it says, Hey James, hope you enjoy the game. Keep up the great work on the Chipsters channel. And as usual, I can't wait until your next video. Take, uh, take care and have a great week. And I'll speak to you soon. John, Xbox 360 Collections. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, he sent me a copy of Fable on the Xbox, which is actually a game I have never played. Um, so let me know what you think about this game and I will definitely play this later on this afternoon. That's that's excellent. Oh, thank you so much, man. That's, that's superb. Thanks once again, John, and I'm really going to enjoy the rest of my afternoon giving this a whirl. Well, from one great package to another, let's check out this. And this is actually something I've wanted to share with you as I want it back on eBay in February and I was, I was the only bidder as well which is even better and this is also something that I used to own all those years back in 1986 which my mum and dad bought me and this is actually a part or was part of a, a war between two laser tagging companies so uh, let's crack it open and I'll share it with you. I've really been looking forward to opening this package and to be honest I have no idea where to start. I'll go along the front here. Well yes, here we have the Photon Electronic Warrior Battle Game and yes this came out of the year of 1986 and as I said before my mum and dad got me this and this is the red helmet edition and there was a green helmet that you could get and uh, this was in a big war between um, two laser tagging companies and uh, this is the one that I received from my mum and dad and this was fantastic all those years back in 1986 and look what they produced brilliant well I would definitely feature the Photon Warrior battle game in an up and coming 
review and I'm looking forward to unboxing it and doing an in-depth review on it as well and I really hope that you look forward to that as well and if you've ever seen one of these let me know and I'd love to hear about it. Well from two great packages, really fun packages, to the first system review of this season let's check out this as this is the Micro Genius IQ 1000. Well yes, this is the Micro Genius IQ 1000, which is actually a Famicom clone and was released all those years back, sometime during the late 80s and the early 90s. And the company behind this is actually Micro Genius themselves, who have released many different systems of Famicom clones over the years and are actually based in Taiwan. Now they have released most of their systems throughout Asia and certain parts of Europe where the NES or Famicom was never actually officially released. And there have been many different types of Famicom clones over the years. There are endless amounts and this is just one of many. And also they have taken on many different shapes and sizes of the systems and even copied the latest consoles of today from the Xbox to the PlayStation 2 to even the Genesis which goes certainly for this system as it looks more like a Model 2 Genesis than anything else. Well that was the background info so let's have a look at the Micro Genius IQ 1000. Well, here is the Micro Genius box, and as you can see, it's still in great shape, and the contents is in really good condition. Uh, within the box, you get the instruction manual for the console and a warranty card, and here is the system itself. And as you can see, it sort of looks like that Model 2 Genesis, but I suppose it's a bit of a cross between Model 1 and the Model 2 Genesis. On the front, you get a huge eject button for releasing those games, and a power on and off switch with a red LED light. And on the right-hand side, you get a reset switch. And at the very front of the console you have the infrared panel for picking up that wireless controller. On the bottom there's not much to really look at, just a few caution notes and that. And on the right and the left hand side of the console are the controller ports for plugging in your controls. And here is that wireless Micro Genius controller which comes with this particular set. You get the infrared receiver on the top for interacting with the console itself. You get a cursor, you get your start and select buttons and your A and B buttons. It's laid out much the same as any NES or Famicom controller. And you get a turbo button and you can also select which player is using the controller at the time. Also on the back you get these really nice comfy grips when you're holding the controller and also within the controller you'll need to fit two AA batteries. Also contained within the set you get the regular controller which needs to be plugged into the console and the buttons are much the same as the wireless controller although the turbo buttons are actual physical buttons rather than using a switch. And also as an extra touch you get a headphone port for plugging in your headphones so you can listen to that music which is a really nice touch. Also within the set you get the AV leads and the power adapter and the games that I have stored away here are Batman, Top Gun and I also have free cartridges with lots of games built inside them. Well, let's look at some gameplay. We don't have much time for gameplay, but the cartridge I've plugged into the system is the 31 all-in-one game cartridge, which has some classic games on, and here I am playing Contra, and I love this game, especially in the two-player mode setting. Also, we have Galaga, which is another one of my favourite classics, and is very similar to Space Invaders. And finally, we have Urban Champion, which makes me laugh, especially when the police arrive and the players act all nonchalant and start to whistle. Well even though this system is not the real McCoy, it's still a great clone of a classic and it certainly gives me great pleasure as I've always wanted to play the real Nintendo Famicom cards and uh, that for me is a really great thing. And I've also been informed by Fat Funk and he's, he's written in one of my messages a while back, um, he said quote, uh, the Micro Genius IQ 1000, that was considered a higher end model because of the wireless pads. It was, a quite, it was quite a big thing here in Malaysia and people weren't talking about Famicons but instead Micro Geniuses. And that to me is really fascinating and thanks for sharing that, that with us uh, Fat Funk. Um, that's certainly very interesting. It's always very interesting to find out about these these clones and how they came about and I'll certainly feature another one of these micro geniuses or a clone later in the future. 
Well, when I picked up my Micro Genius, it came with a tag as being fairly rare. And to be honest, it probably is in the UK as I've never seen one before. But I managed to pick this up for on eBay for £40, which I was actually quite sceptical about and I, I thought I might have paid too much for. But in terms of what it can do and play those real Nintendo Famicom carts, I'm actually extremely happy about that. Um, so in terms of what you'll probably pay today, well, you're possibly looking at about 30 to 50 pounds or 30 to 50 dollars. But once again, I'm not sure how common they are in places like in America or other countries around the world. So if you've ever seen one or come across one of these before, then please let me know and I'd be very interested to know what your thoughts and opinions are and what kind of prices that you've paid for them as well. Well, for me, this has been a great and exciting Sunday and a great return to the new season of video games and consoles from the loft. We've had a couple of packages, some great memories and a system review and I'm looking forward to next Sunday already and I hope that you are too. Have a great week, take care and enjoy the rest of your Sunday.